Okay, Hank Iros here with Iros Motorsport uh, with our controller starting to hit the market with our secondary fuel kit for the 2.5 TFSI. I wanted to just run through quickly how to set up the user interface so that you can be adding fuel in a very short amount of time. So first thing you're going to want to do is to download Tuner Studio. And with Tuner Studio installed, you are going to want to start a new project. Um, so click New Project and name it whatever you want and then you want to put just a description um, you know we typically do what kits on it E85 pump fuel race fuel whatever it needs to be and then detect the firmware you need to have the key on for that because that's how the 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 controller is getting its power so turn it on it's gonna see that it has it on one of your ports with a simple USB to serial and then it's gonna ask you for some setup information um, you don't use a lot of this stuff because most people are using this really um, action-packed controller for is just fuel. But if you want to do other stuff such as flex fuel or add a wide band in or a, a, um, anything else that EGT control, you can do it in this section. Um, it's going to ask you for some more information on how you're going to be connecting how you're going to look at your dashboard when you open the utility up and then you're just going to finish. So now you're in your project and that's not to be confused with your tune. It's just your project for this car. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up the car and first thing you want to do is go and look at um, your oh, first thing you want to do is you're going to want to connect to it in your project. So you go to communications, setting, um, test the port and then just detect it again. So it's going to run through that same protocol to figure out if you have a controller connected to the ECU. So it found it. We're going to accept that and we're going to accept that and now we are going to be actually in the um, in the ECU and we are in a tuned file now that we'll have to save later. But first we want to set up the map sensors and whatnot. So um, go tools and then map borrow and then you're gonna see here so we have this set up for a custom and this is how most of the ECUs will ship unless specified differently but our custom is basically the four bar TDI map sensor um, so this will allow for up to 4,000 millibar 400 kPa or um, and so you'll burn that if you need to use the stock sensors um, the three bars very very close for reference but you'll still want to do custom and tweak these a little bit to make them perfect um, anyways, you can you can double check that you're you're spot on by looking at this cell right here, which is your your fuel load or your your map sensor. So you can see here it's at 92, 91 kPa, and that's just because we're here in Las Vegas at altitude, so we're at nine tenths of an atmosphere. Um, if we were at sea level, that would I'd expect that to say 100. If you have a really wrong setting, such as like 120 or maybe 60, uh, your map sensor settings need tweaked. Um, so after you have that set up, then you're able to look at just the general setup of the car. So basic load settings up here, and then look at engine, sequential configuration. So just check that the injector size is correct for what you were sent. Um, if you need to tweak that, you just go in here and tweak these settings, 630 cc's, number of cylinders, five, displacement, 200 or 2,500 cc's, and then that will um, that will pop populate up a, a required fuel. And once you do that, you just burn it. And don't don't worry about this saying four. It's just how it's calculating the tack in here. It doesn't really matter though, because it's using the 60-2 OEM wheel to figure out RPM. Uh, anyways, at that point, you're ready to start up and just double verify that everything makes sense. Um, you know, so RPM makes sense. Now we can sit here and look at the tack and we can see, yep, that looks right. Um, so we're good to go there. And then our map sensor is correct. The TPS doesn't matter because it's not influencing injector flow whatsoever. It's blind. Um, so at that point, we can go and look at fuel settings and pull up our VE table. So here you can see a cursor. You have two axes. On one axis, you have RPM. And on the other axis, you have load or, um, you know, basically just your your map sensor. These are all configurable, so if you want to make the resolution more or less, 
you can go in and change these these so if you're not running you know four bar worth of boost um, then you don't really need that that's just wasted resolution same with rpm if you don't if you're not running 8,000 rpm motor if you're only running it to 7,000 you know you, you can space these a little bit closer and get better resolution for this application though we'll need all 8,000 rpm we'll need all four bar as you can see here it's just a standard VE table. Uh, so as your RPMs increase, the number increases for injection. As boost rate raises, then you're also going to be increasing the number for boost. Um, so you can see it track. Um, so anyways, next step is just to find yourself a wideband. I really like VCDC because it shows you what the OEM's ECU is doing for trims. Um, so just go into your measuring blocks and um, I usually look at low side pressure as well on a secondary setup. This has a brushless fuel pump uh, so that we can fuel the 800 wheel horsepower on ethanol. Anyways, once you have that, then you're in a position where you can start tuning the cells. Um, you know, so if you use your, if you lose, use the trims as a guide, you can see what these numbers actually need to be. So right now we're sitting at idle. It's pulling out 2%, 3%, that's close enough. I like to keep everything within about 5% worth of trims. Um, and, and I'm probably too picky about it. A lot of people run way more than that, um, even on, you know, calibrations. So you're just looking basically at um, your trim number and then referencing it to your table. So as you increase an RPM, So this is untuned on this car, so I expect that to be off a little bit. That number is going to have to increase a little bit in order to make the trims go to zero. So as you start increasing boost, you can start to see um, an RPM. You can sit there and go through level by level by level and figure out exactly how much fuel and what the number needs to be for that. Um, the ultimate goal is to have this entire map have numbers that result in zero trims, and that's possible. Um, this map in particular, this is for ethanol, um, it's an E85 car, so it's injecting fuel everywhere, even at idle. Uh, the ECU that's in the car, the United Motorsport tune, it thinks that it's running gasoline for fuel tables, so it needs 35% everywhere in order to, to stay on Lambda target. Um, if you're running a petroleum or a race fuel, you may not even mess around with these bottom tables, you know, under 250 kPa, you may not need to add any fuel there, or, or maybe not until up top where the injection window gets really, really small. So it may not be a bad idea just to be at zeros if you're, you feel good about your OEM calibration, and then just simply start blending in fuel as you get up into those, those tables. Um, so once you have your calibration sorted and you feel like it's a good tune, and you're making good power and it's safe, can't stress that enough. You can really hurt hurt things with with um, the wrong set set of hands behind a computer. Once you feel like everything's safe and that Lambda's safe, and you're meeting a request for Lambda target, you come in here and just save the tune. Um, uh, sorry, save tune as, and then you can you know say the date or some more information, but yeah, just just plug something in to where you can reference it later. If you want multiple maps or map select, you can do that as well. Um, yeah, that's the basics of it. It does require some responsibility on the tuner's end, but this is very easy. Any calibrator that's that's calibrating the OEM ECU is gonna look at this and realize this is super simple. Hope this was informative. Uh, we look forward to a lot more 2.5 TFSIs making a lot more power.